Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel, All About BI. Uh, in this session, I am going to talk a little bit about uh, how to process an API uh, request and uh, get the result from API call and then write it to a file and eventually to a SQL table. Okay, so the requirement is this: I have a REST API. It will be giving me a string object, but internally it will have a JSON um, structure inside that. It has to be returned to a text file in ADLS and eventually to a SQL Server table. So text file to SQL Server table, it's going to be very simple. We are going to do it and uh, do it on the fly by creating a, uh, a table automatically. Okay, auto create table option we will be using. But how to do this uh, intermediate part that I'll be covering uh, in this session, right? So for demo purpose, I'm using this particular URL for getting some uh, random freely available. Uh, users data okay from this API uh, the, if, if, if you want to access the same you can find the link in the description right so this but basically has the details of users right so this is the data that uh, we are going to write to a SQL table we will not have a SQL table already created but then it will be created on the fly now we'll use the auto create option as I told you in the beginning right so how to do that uh, so first thing that we need to do is to use a web activity I'll just do this Okay, so we have a web activity and then under settings, I'll just copy paste whatever we had it in the um, tab. So this will be getting me um, the data that I showed you now, users data. The method that I'm going to use is get and there is no authentication here because it's a freely available data. Anybody can access it for free. So that's why there is no authentication process involved or token generation involved here. Right, so now uh, next to that we need to use a set variable activity. Why? Because whatever result it is going to give, and give me, I'm going to capture it and put it in a variable for the next activity to use that. Okay, so let us declare a variable name here. Um, probably we'll call it the API data. It can be of type string. So how do we assign the value to this variable? I'll call this variable and then add dynamic content and web activities output will be having a tag called response uh, how do i say that if you go to the top you will be seeing response in the uh, adf when, when the web activity runs we will see the response and inside that response only we will have the whole data that i'm showing you here right so this is going to be the um, so that's why I'm calling the response object of the output uh, of the web activity. Okay, so it is going to be simple. So I'm just doing this. And the next thing is uh, writing the response to a text file, as I mentioned, right? So for that, we will use a trick here. Okay, so we cannot point this variable directly from copy activity source. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a dummy file. Okay, so I will be using... A dummy file so if you see the data here I just have one column and one row okay anyway I'm not going to use this data this is just for a placeholder purpose because source of a copy activity needs a data set okay we, we, we need not uh, point to a very bigger file so that it takes time for processing no it, it's a simple file with one row and one column right and it's not going to have any confidential data as well so keep it that way so what we are going to do, we are going to uh, refer to the dummy uh, file in the source data set and then we are going to add an additional column in the uh, bottom. So what we are going to do, add an additional column, I will call it additional, uh, no we will simply call it API data. right? So you can click on add dynamic content and then now what we are going to do. What is the dynamic content that we have in hand? It is nothing but the variable value, right? So I'll go to the variables, click on this and that's it. So what we have done currently, we have pointed to a dummy source from data so, uh, copy activities uh, source tab and then added an additional column. So I will go to mapping tab now. I'll try to import schemas, okay? Sync data set is required. Let us point to sync data set as well. So sync data set, I can write to a file um, okay, we will write to azfs container container and uh, output folder and then this is the uh, text file that we are going to generate out of the JSON object that we are getting. Okay, let us come to this property a little later. I am going back to the pipeline now. Okay, so uh, sync is selected. Uh, we are not changing anything here. 
under the mapping i will import schema okay i will give some single quote that need not have actual value so when i imported it is showing me two columns because this employee name comes from the dummy file that i showed you this api data is the additional column so we do not need this particular column so i am deleting it we just need the api data column right so we should be good until here okay i will take you through the sync data set now i will show certain properties to take care of right so we have this uh, default row delimiter default column delimiter these are all not changed here what i changed the, the only thing that we have to change is the code character we have to make sure there is no quotes available in the output of the um, uh, response that we are writing to the file we need not put any data inside double quotes or single quotes or whatever so i say no double quote care no quote character similarly we need not escape any data as well okay there is no conflicting data available so i need not escape anything so i'll say no escape character as well if you have a slash here then it will be uh, escaping every row okay every uh, row in your text file will have a slash which will have a problem in the next activity which we are going to use that's why just make sure you are just following these uh, properties okay so up to this uh, we we have covered it now okay we have read the data from rest api we have written the data into a variable and then we have also returned it to a text file finally it has to be returned to a sql server table so that's where we are we need one more copy activity for this and then i'll point to the same uh, data source uh, i'll point to the sync of the previous copy activity the sync of the previous copy activity is nothing but a text file so that text file is going to be the source of this copy activity so that is what i'm going to do now but with only one change here okay so let me create it newly i will point to data lake storage we are not going to read the uh, text file as delimited text we are going to read it as a json object okay so i am clicking on json and i am clicking continue and then i am choosing the data lake storage where my file would be written and then i am choosing the container and it's going to be output folder Finally, I'll just use this file. Okay. Let, let us not uh, import any schema now. I'll say none. I'll say okay. So this is the source of uh, my SQL table. So sync is going to be a SQL table, obviously. So I'll just choose this, and then I'll open. I'll say uh, two because already I have a table called API data table. So I'm just uh, suffixing two with that, and then coming back to the uh, sync i'll say auto create table that's it okay so the expectation is whatever information we are reading from here it has to go to a sql table by name api uh, data table underscore two with auto mapping enabled we are not mapping anything here we are leaving it to data factory if the file that it reads is containing a proper json object then it will automatically map the data to the sql table okay let's see how it works so I'm clicking on debug the one beautiful thing that i liked about this whole approach is that we need not spend any time in parsing the json file okay even if it is a text file we we will have the ability to read it as a json provided the data is clean and it, it conforms to the json structure right so we need not do any manipulation here we do not need data flow here copy activity itself is able to understand the data if it is a proper json formatted data okay so let us see the output of web activity see here it is coming in string so under response header we have all the data and then it is set to a variable again in the string format and then it is being written to a text file it is in progress let's give it some time so meanwhile we will open the file to check if everything is good right so i'm going here storage account 
इससे आउटपुट ओके इट इज फिफ्टीन थर्टी वन नाउ सो दिस इज द डेटा दैट गॉट रिटर्न लेट सी द आउटपुट हाउ इट हैज रिटर्न सी हियर देर इज नो एक्स्ट्रा कोड्स अवेलेबल देर इज नो स्लैश अवेलेबल द डेटा इज प्रिटी क्लीन हियर सो आई होप ऑल द एक्टिविटीज वेंट थ्रू सो द फोर्थ एक्टिविटीज इन प्रोग्रेस इट्स क्रिएटिंग अ टेबल लेट्स वेट फॉर सम टाइम राइट so i'll just open we'll see if it is automatically created see here table is also created and the columns however it is in the source uh, json file it is coming the same way all right so that is what i wanted to show you in this video hope it is going to be useful for those who want to parse uh, the uh, api data and write it or bring it to a sql table eventually so right so if you have any questions please uh, feel free to put it in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching um, keep supporting the channel